G'day, Nathan from Ozaka here. I want to share with you some tips and tricks using the AutoCAD architecture roof object. Now, this is the same object that was back in AutoCAD architectural desktop version one. It was introduced then and it hasn't changed one iota. Okay, so what is it? Now the roof object is found under here, uh, under roof slab. You've got the roof object, which is different from a different animal than the roof slab or the ground slab. Uh, so we click on roof object and we can click points around our, whoops, our lines and we can get a, a roof object. Now you just noticed I use control Z to undo. While you're creating it, you can actually undo and go back several, uh, as many places as you want. Uh, now this object is, is very robust and adaptable. Uh, I want to show you something little. If, if I swing that back there, it'll keep uh, healing itself. I want to just compare that with slabs. Slabs can't even uh, go back past their own point. They can't, they can slide forward, slide forward, but they can't go back past that point. Whereas a roof object, what a, what a beauty here. It's a fantastic little object and it's very robust and does that. I just want to show you about creating it. So if we go back to our, uh, and hit that, or we can use the command line. Now, my shortcut is RF, but uh, the command is roof or roof, AEC roof add. And it'll give you these options. So I could create this little beast here and then I can use, uh, say for example, the G, and yes, I'm gonna switch the gable on. Now this is a, a bit of a slow way of doing it. I'm gonna go that again. No, I don't want a gable option on there. And I just created a gable using some like inaccurate drafting um, to create the gable end. You can also just grab ends and create gables. Uh, now. I want to show you that you can, if you use the palette tool, which is found on the design tab, you can actually uh, apply that to line work. You can apply it to walls, reset to the walls. And you can see that it has created uh, a nice little roof object that follows all the heights of my walls. And you can see it pitches up here. Uh, I'm not quite sure why it's done that little jig there, but never mind. Uh, it's it's followed the pitch of the walls. Now, if I grab this one and create a gable end, I can then select the wall, roof line, modify roof line. I can sit down in my command line, uh, project, auto project it is. Hit A, select the roof object, and it'll actually project my wall up into my roof line. Pop all right, so you can see it's projected up into the roof line. So there's a number of different ways uh, to do that. The other way too is of course you can uh, select, uh, as you select, so I'm just going to use my command there and it's going to use the last number selected. So I'm gonna create that. Uh, I want a gable end here. So I come up here and change that to a gable end and then change it back to my 25 pitch. And you can see it's created the gable. Oh, oops, no, I'm happy with that. I want the gable again now here. And then, okay, that worked. Yeah, so I, even though I was gonna, it wasn't going to pick a new point, I just changed it back and it, and it selected this. So you can see I've got the two gable ends there. Um, I wanna show you just what happens when you can take a roof object, and this is the recommended method, and convert to roof slabs. I hope this roof's not going to disappear. Good. Uh, and just compare the difference. Now, I've got a client that's a bit fussy and keeps changing their minds, and they want to stretch this out here. They want to stretch the whole building over here a bit. They want to make that room smaller and that room bigger. You can see that very quickly. The roof slabs, because they are separate components, quickly become, well, basically a mess and you've no longer got anything there to, to work with. Now, with the roof object, you can do all sorts of things with the object itself. Now, let's, let's show you what I've got also where I've created a funny little double gable here. Let's just take that off there. And again, it will stretch fine. Oh my goodness.
was okay. Now the reason that does that, I was going to tell you in a future video, but there is a, a minute little ac inaccuracy in my plan. What if you, and I'll show you how to do that in a, in a future video to fix that up. All right, let's, um, if you have a look here, select the roof object. You can see all the edges in that roof object. You can select shift select. You can control select individual sites. You can then change the height, the pitching height. You can adjust the overhang on all of those you individually. Each, each of these edges has a, a face slope that can only be changed one at a time. It can't be done all together. So what you need to do is select individual slopes, but you can change them. You can also, for example, add a, a second slope. And I'm just going to creep that up. I've got no idea which face this is. Uh, that's that one there, which is a dumb face to add that gable. But if we select another way we can do it, we can select these two edges, select that one and then that one. You can see it calls them zero and one. That's just the order I selected them. It's not the overall order of the edges. If I go back here, you'll see it's zero to 11. Let's just do that again. So I'm going to, oh, I did it. No, it didn't. I'm going to delete that one by hitting the delete key. I'm going to go back to this one. I'm going to select, change that to 35. I'm going to change this to 500 at 90. And you can see it gives it a uh, Dutch gable, depending on what you call it in your part of the world. But you can, you can uh, make lots of alterations later on. You can see here in fiddling with this so much that it's actually changed a number of things here. You can see things happening. That's fine. That just needs the edges fixed up. That's because I've been playing and setting these heights of different heights. Okay.